California Task Force to Study and Develop Reparation Proposals for African Americans. Content Warning it Contains discussions of racial discrimination, sexual assault, torture, lynching and other forms of extreme violence. It contains unedited historical quotations and photographs of white supremacist hatred, torture, lynching, autopsy, and other forms of graphic violence. Action. Enslavement. American government at all levels enabled and benefited from the direct theft of African Americans' labor since then. Federal, state. Local government actions have directly segregated and discriminated against African Americans and also paved the way for private discrimination in labor and employment federal, state, and local laws and policies, including those of California. Expressly and in practice limited what work African Americans can do and suppressed African Americans wages and opportunities for professional advancement federal laws have also protected white workers while denying the same protections to black workers. Setting up and allowing private discrimination government and private discrimination have contributed to the inability of African Americans to build wealth over generations although progress has been made. Workers continue to face serious discrimination today. The badges and incidents of slavery have carried forward the devaluation of African Americans. Their abilities and their labor did not end. It simply took on different forms. Around the time of the Civil War, state and local governments passed laws known as the Black Codes and Jim Crow laws while these laws touched all aspects of life. Main goals was to control how African Americans earned a living in order to maintain African Americans as a servant class for white Americans. These laws limited African Americans' job opportunities and salaries and their ability to provide for their families. The federal government itself directly discriminated against black workers. Black workers were routinely excluded from federal employment until 1861 and, in 1913, Woodrow Wilson allowed for the federal workforce be segregated. The segregated federal government demoted and relegated black workers to lower paid jobs and, for instance, black workers to use separate toilets in the Treasury and Interior Departments. Although the military offered an opportunity for upward mobility for African Americans, its ranks remained segregated until 1960, with lower pay and rank for black service members even as the overall proportion of black service members has grown leadership has remained overwhelmingly white, with only two black officials out of 41 total holding four-star rank in 2020. The federal government through how this story has passed laws, implemented policies, and made progress in protecting workers, its efforts were often limited in time and impact, and often left out black workers due to compromises with racist southern legislators after the Civil War. Women's Bureau provided for the welfare of previously enslaved African Americans, but it did so in a manner that reinforced racist notions. It lasted only seven years before being dismantled by Congress under pressure from white Southerners. The federal government failed to prevent white Americans from using violence and terror to limit African Americans' ability to earn a living. unions that excluded black workers federal labor protections under the New Deal, which aimed to help American workers' economic prospects, excluded or harmed African Americans. Civil Rights Act of 1964 included Title VII, which largely banned discrimination on the basis of race and employment. However, it did not remedy the discriminatory workplace structures that have accumulated for hundreds of years in 1977. The Supreme Court limited these federal protections to only instances where an employee can prove that their employer intended to discriminate against them. The only high standard federal government affirmative action plans created in the 1970s did lead to an increase in the rate of minority employment in businesses that contracted with the federal government in those years.
Organized backlash has narrowed the scope and impact of these programs since in the early 1980s despite some progress in preventing labor discrimination against black workers, the federal government has made little to no effort to address the harms of past government action. Produced evidence that, as a result of the legacy of enslavement and subsequent and ongoing discrimination, white workers are paid more than black workers, and black and white workers are concentrated in different types of jobs. As of 2019, median black wages were equivalent to only 75-6% of white wages. From a height of 79-2% in 2000 researchers estimate that between one quarter to one third of the wage gap between black and white workers is due to racial discrimination without a safety net of savings. African Americans can be more vulnerable to upheavals in the labor market and less able to advocate for higher wages or other benefits as of 2020. 19.5% of African Americans were living in poverty compared to 82% of non-Hispanic white Americans out of the 2021 S&P 500 and Fortune 500 companies. Six of the chief executive officers of those companies were African Americans in 2020. African Americans held only 87% of the board seats in Fortune 500 companies. Patterns of government neglect and discrimination exist in California. Black workers did not hold many government jobs in the state until World War II when Bay Area Rapid Transit was built in 1967. Skilled black workers were hired because the National Labor Relations Board NLRB, certified unions did not admit black members BART, though a government agency refused to use its power to insist on non-discrimination policies by the unions in 1996. California changed its constitution to ban the use of affirmative action in government employment and education with Proposition 209 persistent discrimination and limited affirmative action have prevented African Americans from receiving the same wages and career opportunities as white Americans. With government support. 24. Chapter 10. Stolen labor and hindered opportunity. Recounts this long history and the continuing impact of discrimination in labor and employment. Section 3 provides a brief summary of enslavement. Explored in greater detail in Chapter 2, Section IV discusses discrimination in the laws enacted and government programs carried out from the Civil War forward, as well as government support of private. Discrimination in Labor and Employment Section IV also includes discussion of the advances and limitations of civil rights laws Section V outlines the history of discrimination in government employment the effects still seen today from centuries of discrimination are summarized in Section V. Statement. Of African Americans in the United States begins with stolen labor the purpose of enslavement was to exploit the fruits of black labor for the benefit of mostly white Americans for a full discussion of enslavement. See Chapter 2 The labor of enslaved African Americans built the infrastructure of the nation, filled the nation's coffers, and produced its main agricultural products for domestic consumption and export. Federal and state law treated African Americans themselves as commodities to be sold by enslavers. This system exploited the labor and love of black mothers to recreate and grow the enslaved labor force. 200 plus years of slavery's existence in this country. Slavers extracted an estimated $14 trillion of labor from the human beings they enslaved. One recent study estimated that enslaved workers were responsible for somewhere between 18.7 and 24.3% of the increase in commodity output per capita nationally between 1839 and 1,859 inches 10 through various forms of and tariffs, often structured to protect the interests of enslavers, federal, State and local governments all reaped financial benefit from this condoned economic activity. 11. Enslavement effectively led to separate labor markets for black and white Americans. 12 white workers had access to a larger and more desirable selection of jobs, while free black workers were relegated to menial labor. 13. Frederick Douglass observed, finding my trade of no immediate benefit, I threw off my cocking habiliments. <laughs> 
prepared myself to do any kind of work I could get to do, 14. There were fewer legal limitations on African Americans in the North. White workers were more motivated to reduce competition from African Americans 15 less threatened by free black workers in the South. White employers were more likely to employ black workers in jobs than free black wage earners in the North 16 in 1860. For example, approximately 10% of black men in New York City worked in a skilled trade, while in Richmond the figure was 32%, and in Charleston, third of the population was black. 76 of black men worked in a skilled trade 17 a few years earlier. In 1856, nearly 40% of black artisans in Philadelphia reported that unrelenting racial prejudice had compelled them to abandon their trades 18. Ornia. In Chapter 2, enslavement existed in California into the mid-1860s. 19 enslavers brought enslaved African Americans with them when they moved west. 20 additionally, California passed its own fugitive slave law in 1852 and, for the three years that it was in force, did courts from recognizing the freedom of those fleeing to California. 21 California at the time strongly discouraged free African Americans from entering its territories. 22 The relatively few free African Americans who resided in California in the late 1700s and the decades that followed tended. Fur traders, scouts, cowboys, and miners. 23. His lack of government oversight allowed slavery to take hold in certain regions, including where enslavers brought African Americans to mine for gold 24. Federal and state law exploited the labor and love of black mothers to create and grow the enslaved labor force. In 1619 and 1808, 300,000 enslaved people were trafficked to the United States. By 1860, approximately 3.9 million enslaved African Americans lived in the United States. Over the 200-plus years of slavery, enslavers extracted an estimated $14 trillion of free labor from enslaved people. 325. After 10. In labor and hindered opportunity. 1952, 300 enslaved persons were involved in gold mining, with other enslaved persons forced to work in other capacities. 25. The California Fugitive Slave Act, coupled with California's law prohibiting the taking of testimony from a black person against a white person. The threat to the lives of both free and enslaved black residents. 26. Labor from Mississippi, Charles Perkins, brought three enslaved men. Robert Perkins, Carter Perkins, and Sandy Jones to California in 1849. 27 Perkins later left the men behind with a friend who released them in 1951. 28 The three freed men then set up a freight hauling business that earned them over $3,000 in personal property. Found $98,000 in 2020, but in 1852, the California Supreme Court ordered the three back to slavery in Mississippi. 29.